Hi there. Now for part B, just before we start, I want to recap if you didn't see the video for part A. We were given this ball which was projected from A and it was projected an angle theta to the horizontal 8 meters above the ground with a speed of u meters per second and it traveled freely under gravity to B where it had a speed of 2 u meters per second just before it hit the ground. And in part A, we had to find the value of u, which we found out to be 7.2295 and so on. Now for this part of the question, we're told that the time taken for the ball to move from A to B is 2 seconds. And we've got to find now the value of theta. And this is for 4 marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment then to pause the video. When you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, to this diagram, what I'd want to do is just show that we've got the acceleration due to gravity, which acts vertically downwards throughout the problem. So that's going to be g, g meters per second per second. And we're also told that the time it takes to go from here to B is 2 seconds. So I'll just write here that T equals 2 seconds, OK, at B. Now when you're doing projectile questions like this, what we do is we consider normally the horizontal and vertical motion. But for this one, all we need to do is consider the vertical motion. So I'm just going to put a note up here. So that the person reading it hopefully will know what we're doing. So I'll just say here, consider the vertical motion. And what I'm going to do is because we've got constant acceleration, I can use a SUVAT based equation. S for displacement, U then for initial velocity, V for final velocity, A for acceleration, and T for time. Now, if I start up here as my initial position, when t equals zero, I need to take a positive sense. It doesn't matter which way you take as the positive sense, but generally, if you project upwards, it's a good idea to take positive as upwards. So I'm going to do that, OK? And then we need to put in our values here. S for displacement, then. Now, you've got to be careful here, because it's going to go up into the air, OK, and then it's going to start to come down. And remember, we're only looking at the vertical motion. So it's started at zero here. It's got a positive displacement when it goes up, comes back down. It's zero again here, but as it falls to the ground, it's now negative eight. So it's negative eight. Whereas if I had my arrow here downwards, S would be eight. U. U is the initial vertical velocity, it's not this U here. So we need to split this into two components. And the component of velocity upwards, if we just mark that in there, because it doesn't contain the angle here, will be U sine theta. OK, just squeeze that in there. I hope you can see that, U sine theta. Now. That means then we've got u sine theta here. Let's just mark that in red just to emphasize the fact that that is that component. V, the final velocity when it gets down here. Now this will be the final vertical velocity. It's not going to be the 2u. I don't know what angle this is making with the vertical. I don't know what that vertical velocity is. So we can just afford to leave that blank. As the acceleration, this always causes problems in questions like this. We should be familiar with this by now, though. That is that g acts downwards, OK? So it's going to be negative, and so that's going to be minus g. Minus 9.8 if we take g to be 9.8. And it doesn't matter that it's going up, OK? And we'll come back down again. It will sort itself out in the calculation. Just take it as negative 9.8. T, we know, is 2. So what we need to do then is just put in our V 
variables. We need to find an equation that we can link all this stuff up with. So what's it going to be? Well, if we use, say, s equals ut plus a half at squared, that's the one that we'll use. It doesn't have v in. So it's just a question now of putting our values in. So it follows that putting s in, s is going to be minus 8. So we've got minus 8 then equals u times t. So u sine theta, u was 7.2295 and so on. So we'll put that in. We'll put it in brackets as 7.2295 and so on. That's multiplied by sine theta, put that in brackets, because we're multiplying it with t, and t, we're told, is 2. Okay. Then it's plus a half times a times t squared. a is minus 9.8, so minus 9.8 there, times t squared, 2 squared. So it's just a question of get on your calculator and work this out. Okay. So we've got minus 8 then equals, and if we do 2 times 7.2295, we end up with 14.459 and so on. Again, I'll put that in brackets because it's multiplied with sine theta. And then we've got a negative term here, and working this out gives minus 19.6 then. And if I add 19.6 to both sides, and then that's going to give me, in fact, 19.6 minus 8, that's going to be 11.6. And if I divide by 14.59 and so on, that will leave me with sine theta. Sine theta then equals 11.6 divided then by 14.459 and so on. Now do that calculation on your calculator and you end up with 0 0.8022 and so on. And so just take the inverse sign of both sides, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And if you take the inverse sign of 0 0.8022, you end up with 53.347 and so on. That's in degrees then. And let's say we round that to one decimal place. That's going to be 53.3 degrees. Okay, two, one decimal place, one dp. All right.